Peroxidine, Wikipedia article audio. Peroxidine, also known by trade names including Paxil and Ciroxid among others, is an antidepressant of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor class. It is used to treat major depressive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It has also been used in the treatment of hot flashes and night sweats associated with menopause. Medical uses Depression Panic Disorder Social Anxiety Disorder Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Menopausal Hot Flashes Adverse Effects Suicide Sexual Dysfunction Pregnancy Discontinuation Syndrome Overdose Interactions Pharmacology Pharmacodynamics Pharmacokinetics Society and Culture Withdrawal Symptoms Off-label Marketing Marketing Sales Trade Names Research it has a similar tolerability profile to other SSRIs. The common side effects include drowsiness, dry mouth, loss of appetite, sweating, trouble sleeping and delayed ejaculation. It may also be associated with a slightly increased risk of birth defects. The rate of withdrawal symptoms in young people may be higher with paroxidine and venlafaxine than other SSRIs and SNRIs. Several studies have associated paroxidine with suicidal thinking and behavior in children and adolescents. Marketing of the drug began in 1992 by the pharmaceutical company SmithKline Beecham, known since 2000 as GlaxoSmithKline. Generic formulations have been available since 2003 when the patent expired. The United States Department of Justice fined GlaxoSmithKline $3 billion in 2012, including a sum for withholding data on peroxidine, unlawfully promoting it for under 18s and preparing an article, following one of its clinical trials, Study 329 that misleadingly reported the drug was effective in treating adolescent depression. Paroxidine is primarily used to treat major depressive disorder, obsessive-compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, premenstrual dysphoric disorder and menopausal hot flashes. A variety of meta-analyses have been conducted to evaluate the efficacy of paroxidine in depression. They have variously concluded that paroxidine is superior or equivalent to placebo and that it is equivalent or inferior to other antidepressants. Despite this, there was no clear evidence that paroxidine was better or worse compared with other antidepressants at increasing response to treatment at any time point. Paroxidine was the first antidepressant formally approved in the United States for the treatment of panic disorder. Several studies have concluded that paroxidine is superior to placebo in the treatment of panic disorder. Paroxidine has demonstrated efficacy for the treatment of social anxiety disorder in adults and children. There was a significant improvement in scores on the Leibovitz Social Anxiety Scale and Social Phobia Inventory compared with placebo. It is also beneficial for people with CO occurring social anxiety disorder and alcohol use disorder. Paroxidine is used in the treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder. Comparative efficacy of paroxidine is equivalent to that of clomipramine and venlafaxine.
Paroxidine is also effective for children with obsessive compulsive disorder. On June 28, 2013, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved low dose paroxidine for the treatment of moderate to severe vasomotor symptoms such as hot flashes and night sweats associated with menopause. Randomized controlled trials have shown modest relief in such cases. At the low dose used for menopausal hot flashes, side effects are similar to placebo and dose tapering is not required for discontinuation. Paroxidine shares many of the common adverse effects of SSRIs, including, nausea 26%, diarrhea 12%, constipation 14%, dry mouth 18%, somnolence 23%, insomnia 13%, headache 18%, hypomania 1%, blurred vision 4%, loss of appetite 6%, nervousness 5%, paresthesia 4%, dizziness 13%, asthenia, tremor 8%, sweating 11%, and sexual dysfunction. Most of these adverse effects are transient and go away with continued treatment. Central and peripheral 5-HT3 receptor stimulation is believed to result in the gastrointestinal effects observed with SSRI treatment. Compared to other SSRIs, it has a lower incidence of diarrhea a higher incidence of anticholinergic effects, sedation-slash-somnolence-slash-drowsiness, sexual side effects, and weight gain. Due to reports of adverse withdrawal reactions upon terminating treatment, the Committee for Medicinal Products for Human Use at the European Medicines Agency recommends gradually reducing over several weeks or months if the decision to withdraw is made. See also Discontinuation Syndrome Mania or hypomania may occur in 1% of patients with depression and up to 12% of patients with bipolar disorder. This side effect can occur in individuals with no history of mania but it may be more likely to occur in those with bipolar or with a family history of mania. Like other antidepressants, Paroxidine may increase the risk of suicidal thinking and behavior in children and adolescents. The FDA conducted a statistical analysis of paroxidine clinical trials in children and adolescents in 2004 and found an increase in suicidality and ideation as compared to placebo, which was observed in trials for both depression and anxiety disorders. In 2015 a paper published in the BMJ that reanalyzed the original case notes argued that in study 329, assessing paroxidine and imipramine against placebo in adolescents with depression, the incidence of suicidal behavior had been underreported and the efficacy exaggerated for paroxidine. Sexual dysfunction, including loss of libido, anorgasmia, lack of vaginal lubrication, and erectile dysfunction, is one of the most commonly encountered adverse effects of treatment with paroxidine and other SSRIs. While early clinical trials suggested a relatively low rate of sexual dysfunction, more recent studies in which the investigator actively inquires about sexual problems suggest that the incidence is higher than 70%. Symptoms of sexual dysfunction have been reported to persist after discontinuing SSRIs, although this is thought to be occasional. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends that for pregnant women and women planning to become pregnant, treatment with all SSRIs or selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors or both during pregnancy be individualized and paroxidine use among pregnant women or women planning to become pregnant be avoided, if possible. According to the prescribing information, epidemiological studies have shown that infants born to women who had first trimester paroxidine exposure had an increased risk of cardiovascular malformations, 
primarily ventricular and atrial septal defects. In general, septal defects range from those that are symptomatic and may require surgery to those that are asymptomatic and may resolve spontaneously. If a patient becomes pregnant while taking peroxidine, she should be advised of the potential harm to the fetus. Unless the benefits of peroxidine to the mother justify continuing treatment, consideration should be given to either discontinuing peroxidine therapy or switching to another antidepressant. These conclusions are supported by multiple systematic reviews and meta-analyses that found that, on average, the use of peroxidine during pregnancy is associated with about 1.5-1.7 fold increase in congenital birth defects, in particular, heart defects. Many psychoactive medications can cause withdrawal symptoms upon discontinuation from administration. Evidence has shown that peroxidine has among the highest incidence rates and severity of withdrawal syndrome of any medication of its class. Common withdrawal symptoms for peroxidine include nausea, dizziness, lightheadedness, and vertigo, insomnia, nightmares, and vivid dreams, feelings of electricity in the body, as well as crying and anxiety. Liquid formulation of peroxidine is available and allows a very gradual decrease of the dose, which may prevent discontinuation syndrome. Another recommendation is to temporarily switch to floxidin, which has a longer half-life and thus decreases the severity of discontinuation syndrome. Acute overdosage is often manifested by emesis, lethargy, ataxia, tachycardia, and seizures. Plasma, serum, or blood concentrations of peroxidine may be measured to monitor therapeutic administration, confirm a diagnosis of poisoning in hospitalized patients or to aid in the medical-legal investigation of fatalities. Plasma peroxidine concentrations are generally in a range of 4400 mg L in persons receiving daily therapeutic doses and 202,000 mg L in poisoned patients. Postmortem blood levels have ranged from 14 mg L in acute lethal overdose situations. Along with the other SSRIs, sertraline, and floxidin. Peroxidine is considered a low-risk drug in cases of overdose. Interactions with other drugs acting on the serotonin system or impairing the metabolism of serotonin may increase the risk of serotonin syndrome or neuroleptic malignant syndrome-like reaction. Such reactions have been observed with SNRIs and SSRIs alone but particularly with concurrent use of triptans, MAO inhibitors, antipsychotics, or other dopamine antagonists. Peroxidine might interact with statins, resulting in increased blood glucose levels. This was demonstrated in a small retrospective study and needs confirmation in a prospective study. The prescribing information states that paroxidine should not be used in combination with an MAUI, or within 14 days of discontinuing treatment with an MAUI, and should not be used in combination with pimazide, thioridazine, tryptophan, or warfarin. Paroxidine interacts with the following cytochrome P450 enzymes. Peroxidine is the most potent and one of the most specific selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It also binds to the allosteric site of the serotonin transporter, similarly, but less potently, than escitalopram. Peroxidine also inhibits the reuptake of norepinephrine to a lesser extent. Based on evidence from four weeks of administration in rats, the equivalent of 20 mg peroxidine taken once daily occupies approximately 88% of serotonin transporters in the prefrontal cortex. Peroxidine is well absorbed following oral administration. It has an absolute bioavailability of about 
with evidence of a saturable first pass effect. When taken orally, it achieves maximum concentration in about 6-10 hours and reaches steady state in 7-14 days. Paroxetine exhibits significant inter-individual variations in volume of distribution and clearance. Less than 2% of an oral dose is excreted in urine unchanged. Paroxetine is a mechanism-based inhibitor of CYP2D6. GlaxoSmithKline has paid substantial fines, paid settlements in class action lawsuits, and become the subject of several highly critical books about its marketing of paroxetine, in particular the off-label marketing of paroxetine for children, the suppression of negative research results relating to its use in children, and allegations that it failed to warn consumers of substantial withdrawal effects associated with use of the drug. In 2002 the US FDA published a warning regarding severe discontinuation symptoms among those terminating paroxetine treatment, including paresthesia, bad dreams, and dizziness. The agency also warned of case reports describing agitation, sweating, and nausea. In connection with a Glaxo spokesperson's statement that withdrawal reactions occur only in 0.2% of patients and are mild and short-lived, the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association said GSK had breached two of the Federation's codes of practice. Paroxetine prescribing information posted at GlaxoSmithKline now acknowledges the occurrence of a discontinuation syndrome, including serious discontinuation symptoms. In early 2004, GSK agreed to settle charges of consumer fraud for $2.5 million. The legal discovery process also uncovered evidence of deliberate, systematic suppression of unfavorable Paxil research results. One of GSK's internal documents read, it would be commercially unacceptable to include a statement that efficacy had not been demonstrated, as this would undermine the profile of paroxetine. In 2012 the U.S. Justice Department announced that GSK had agreed to plead guilty and pay a $3 billion fine in part for promoting the use of Paxil for children. On February 12, 2016, the UK Competition and Markets Authority imposed record fines of £45 million on companies which were found to have infringed European Union and UK competition law by entering into agreements to delay the market entry of generic versions of the drug in the UK. GlaxoSmithKline received the bulk of the fines, being fined £37,600,757. Other companies, which produce generics, were issued fines which collectively total £7,384,146. UK public health services are likely to claim damages for being overcharged in the period where the generic versions of the drug were illegally blocked from the market, as the generics are over 70% less expensive. GlaxoSmithKline may also face actions from other generics manufacturers who incurred loss as a result of the anti-competitive conduct. On April 18, 2016, Appeals were lodged with the Competition Appeal Tribunal by the companies which were fined. CYP2D6 for which it is both a substrate and a potent inhibitor, CYP2B6 inhibitor, CYP3A4 inhibitor, CYP1A2 inhibitor, CYP2C9 inhibitor, CYP2C19 inhibitor. In 2007, Paroxetine was ranked 94th on the list of best-selling drugs, with over $1 billion in sales. In 2006, paroxetine was the fifth most prescribed antidepressant in the U.S. retail market, with more than 19.7 million prescriptions. In 2007, 
sales had dropped slightly to 18.1 million but peroxidine remained the fifth most prescribed antidepressant in the U.S. Trade names include Aropax, Bristel, Deroxit, Paxil, Pexiva, Paxtein, Paxidin, Peroxit, Paraxil, Serapin, and Seroxit. Several studies have suggested that paroxidine can be used in the treatment of premature ejaculation. In particular, intravaginal ejaculation latency time was found to increase with 613-fold, which was somewhat longer than the delay achieved by the treatment with other SSRIs. However, Paroxidine taken acutely 3-10 hours before coitus resulted only in a clinically irrelevant and sexually unsatisfactory 1.5-fold delay of ejaculation and was inferior to clomipramine, which induced a 4-fold delay. There is also evidence that paroxidine may be effective in the treatment of compulsive gambling and hot flashes. Benefits of paroxidine prescription for diabetic neuropathy or chronic tension headache are uncertain. Although the evidence is conflicting, paroxidine may be effective for the treatment of dysthemia, a chronic disorder involving depressive symptoms for most days of the year. Bosley, Sarah Seroxid study under-reported harmful effects on young people, say scientists. The Guardian, September 16, 2015